Canada's Northwest Territories span more than 1,300,000 square kilometers. Its tree line separates Arctic tundra from lush boreal forest. This extreme landscape is not for the faint of heart. Nahani National Park Reserve is a rugged playground featuring Virginia Falls, the wild South Nahani River, and the mighty canyons of the Ram Plateau. Tuk Tuk No Guide National Park is a remote sanctuary protecting the blue nose west caribou during their birthing season. In the wilds of the Northwest Territories lies Nahani National Park Reserve, sheltering a section of the Mackenzie Mountain Range. Nahani was established in 1972 to protect 4,766 square kilometers of land from a proposed hydro dam project. I think the main impetus for establishing a park in the first place was that it was, a, it was already becoming a popular uh, river destination and so a, a fascinating wilderness area. And there was a proposal for uh, putting in a hydroelectric dam at Virginia Falls and using that power to uh, not only supply existing communities but also potential mines in the area with the, the mineral potential. In 2009, the boundaries were extended it was always known from the very beginning that the park wasn't big enough. It really was, was set aside as a corridor that prevented that, that uh, dam development, but it really wasn't big enough to protect the ecosystem, to protect the wildlife, and to really adequately protect this amazing wonder. The park now protects 30,000 square kilometers, making it the third largest national park in Canada. Well, it now protects an area the size of Vancouver Island. Um, so it's a vast, vast place, virtually roadless. Nahani National Park Reserve was given its name by the indigenous Dene people. To the Dene, Nahani means river of the land of the Naha people. The area was uh, used by the local Dene for thousands of years, so this area is actually explored pretty early on. Nahani is an important destination for visitors looking to experience pristine wilderness. You get a lot of people that have been planning a long time to come here, and, and usually the trip certain lives up to their dreams, so it's, uh, yeah, it rates pretty highly. The new expanded Nahani National Park Reserve contains granite peaks in the Cirque of the Unclimbables to rival the great granite walls of Yosemite. It contains canyons to rival the great canyons of the Colorado Plateau. It contains hot springs 
at Rabbit Kettle, Lake Hot Springs, and Yellowstone. It contains the Ram Plateau and the Karstlands, which are a landscape unlike any other in North America except the Yucatan Peninsula. And all of that is enwrapped in a, in a completely wilderness environment with things like grizzly bears and moose and caribou and one of the world's most famous canoeing rivers and some of the most famous rock climbing on earth. You bundle that all together and you have multiple national parks in one and you have one of the most exceptional places for somebody who loves natural beauty to visit. One of the most breathtaking sights in Nahani is Virginia Falls, which has a drop of 96 meters, twice that of Niagara Falls. Virginia Falls, of course, is a classic icon and uh, is always spellbinding. It's, uh, it's a powerful place and it uh, resonates uh, in my, my soul, my heart. The rapids are challenging and invigorating and it's the, uh, the daily routine of camp life and uh, packing up in the morning and moving to a new beautiful camp that night and, and uh, enjoying camp life uh, is, is a very rich way to live. Water flows down Virginia Falls into the Nahani River. Over thousands of years, the Nahani River has eroded a path through the land, creating a natural highway for visitors. The Nani River is beautiful. It's very diverse with the canyons and some, a little bit of white water here and there on the lower sections. Rabbit Kettle Lake Hot Springs are surrounded by the largest tufa mounds in Canada. One of the things that we uh, are pretty proud of is uh, the uh, tufa mounds. They're a very unique geological structure. The water comes up out of the ground and pre precipitates out calcium carbonate. It creates this really big mound as, as the water comes out and gradually builds up calcium carbonate. So these tooth mounds are impressive because they're so large. The, uh, the largest mound that will go up is, is pushing 100 feet in height. It's uh, fairly symmetrical. It looks like a giant layer cake of uh, sort of off-white to, uh, to a dirty gray. This land, you'll notice, is very pockmarked with little sinkhole lakes, so the topography is very rolling. It's a very pleasant hike in itself, just along little ridge lines through forest to lake to forest to lake. Nahani's Mackenzie Mountains feature the Ram Plateau. The 
This is the Ram Plateau, and it's a new part of Nahani National Park and one of the real jewels of the, the uh, park. And uh, it's a, a massive expanse of this kind of uh, backdrop. Every direction you look is just incredible. It's a unique geological feature within the uh, karst landscape, which is the dissolved limestone. It causes arches and caves and underground rivers. And it's a, a great uh, place for spending a week. You can easily spend a week camped up here on the plateau and cover new ground every day and new vistas that are each one taking your breath away. You walk on the Ram Plateau and you just cannot believe the multitude of canyons that incise and that you wander around among blooming meadows of wildflowers. It's just an astonishing place. The Mackenzie Mountains showcase a cluster of staggering peaks, known as the Cirque of the Unclimbables. Behind me here is the Cirque of the Unclimbables, which are actually air climbable and quite, quite popular for a remote flying and climbing location. So that hard rock up there is, uh, is very good for, for big wall climbing. Um, that's become a, a new activity in the park since the expansion, and uh, we're hoping that will become more popular. Nahani's landmarks have earned the park World Heritage status through UNESCO. You know, the exciting thing about having been able to devote about 10 years to protecting the Nahani and create one of the world's largest national parks was knowing that we were putting in place something as important as the Serengeti, or as Yellowstone, or as Banff on the map of the world. Because this place is big enough to serve as a core area that will protect its values through time. And this place is going to matter more 100 years from now than it matters now, and it already matters a great deal now.
To the north of Nahani National Park Reserve is Tuktut Nogai National Park. It is located more than 170 kilometers north of the Arctic Circle. Tuktut was established in 1998, making it one of the newest parks in the national park system. This isolated land is bathed in 24-hour sunlight during the spring and summer months. The park today is about 18,000 square kilometers, so a significant national park. This is the traditional land of the Inuvaluit First Nations. The Inuvaluit are deeply involved in the management of the park, making decisions that affect the area, including naming the park. This place, Tudnogai National Park, was uh, named by an elder, elder person in politics, naming uh, the cabin ground the birthplace of the caribou. The park protects the land of the blue-nosed west caribou, the most important animal in Inuvaluit culture. The number one reason for establishing this park was the protection of the calving grounds of the blue-nosed caribou herd. And it's uh, always a welcoming sight Every year you see the caribou's coming back and uh, having their young, so it's, it's more like uh, they're coming back home again. The caribou calve for a few short weeks every year, from late May until June. And that's a very vulnerable time because then the, the calf, uh, the female must uh, find food to nurse. Uh, she must uh, maintain a close relationship with the calf. And similarly in post-calving, which takes place during July, they must maintain this relationship, this, this bond between mother and calf. And so the herd is, is vulnerable during June and July. Inuit live in the nearby hamlet of Politak. They rely on the caribou to sustain their diets throughout the year. Politic doesn't have a lot of opportunities for people to make a living. If you ever got a chance to visit it and you visited other small communities in the Arctic, it's a very expensive place to live. Food is extremely expensive. So to be able to feed their kids, they need to be able to hunt. And this is why the park is so important to them, is that caribou, they want to be able to maintain those populations so people can, as fundamental as that, feed themselves. Before the Inuvaluit lived here, the land was inhabited by the Thule culture. Aboriginals have called this area home for thousands of years. There are more than 500 archaeological sites within the park, including human remains and dozens of food caches. Tuktut Nogai's Arctic landscape is vast and treeless. Rivers carve out the bedrock. Most people assume a park in the Arctic is made up of tundra and that's certainly in abundance here. But we also have two very significant riparian features, the, the Hornaday River and the, the Brock River, and both of those rivers have very extensive canyon systems. The Hornaday River twists and turns for 190 kilometers across the territory. It can be a challenge to visit Tuktuk Nogai National Park, 
The nearest airport is located 40 kilometers away in the hamlet of Polituck. The only way into the park from Polituck is by seaplane or on foot, a three-day hike. Once inside the park, visitors live off the land without the luxury of park shelters or modern conveniences. Tuktut is so remote, it averages just 30 visitors a year. Tuktuk Nogait is, is not a park easily accessible for most people. The level of planning that's required for that sort of a trip and the amount of self-sufficiency that's required for that sort of trip, there are certainly people who do it and are capable of doing it, but it's a small group of people. When visitors do make it to the park, they stay for weeks at a time. We get people who come here for, for hiking trips that are three and four weeks long. They just come up here and spend three or four weeks walking in the park. And so that's pretty unusual for, for any sort of national park. The star attraction is the wild Hornaday River. We've got the Hornaday River here, which is one of the sort of the, 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 the must-do rivers in terms of Arctic travel. If, if people are looking for an Arctic wilderness adventure, canoeing down the Hornaday River from, from the very southern end of the park to, to this point in the park is certainly one of the things that people pursue. We're at the very beginning of figuring out what we want to do with this park and, and what sort of things people could do when they, when they come and visit. And, 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 and we're just taking those first initial steps. But for visitors, they're also going to be pioneers. But there's not very many people who've gone, come before them and, and they're sort of setting the, the way for future, for future experiences. Together, Tuk Tut No Guide National Park and Nahani National Park Reserve protect more than 48,000 square kilometers of land in Canada's Northwest Territories. The National Park being established uh, protects that, those crucial parts of, the, of, the, of this herd's life cycle. The caribou is, is central to the whole ecology up here. Many, many other species, terrestrial species, land species, rely on the caribou for their existence. No caribou, this would be a very different landscape. I think there's a growing understanding that we need to think bigger in conservation, that if we're going to protect ecosystems and protect all of the, the animals that live in those ecosystems, animals that require large areas, um, we're going to have to think bigger. And the, in Canada, we still have an opportunity to proactively, particularly in the north, protect large areas of land for conservation. And this is an example of, of how that can happen.